Hello guys, Jeremy back on the Minecraft server and I have another Minecraft theology for you guys. So I am diving deep into a bunch of different marital counseling books and just Christian marriage books as well. And some of the stuff that I read in there, it, it feels very basic, but I recognize that a lot of the stuff, a lot of the times for myself and others just simply needs to be basic. The idea of Christian marriage for me is something that I've kind of held on to strongly because I've had really good examples in my life of what it means to be a Christian and to be married. And for me, the process of all of this simply comes down to who are you treating as most important in your relationship? And I'm talking about uh, a human in front of you, not necessarily Jesus in this process because ultimately Jesus is the one that comes first and everything and I think that Christians use this ability to treat other people inappropriately because they're a Christian and I have a difficult time with that and this isn't necessarily a uh, theology to sit here and bash Christians but it is something that's true we do love to try to just kind of pick people apart and say, isn't Jesus supposed to be the most important person in your life? Well, yes. And then how does that get reflected in your marriage? That's an important piece of it. And I think that that's a difficult process. Now, all that to say, I think for me, some of the tough things about marriage is I do a lot of counseling. I do a lot of counseling with people that are married and couples that only one of the people wants to come in for counseling. And for me, the, the biggest I don't know if it's, it's not a fear, but it's definitely concern. It's definitely a sadness is that they come to seek help long after they're at a point where help is going to work. Now, certainly Jesus can do amazing things. People can absolutely come over these humps. Um, I've seen many people be, be very successful in their process of marriage and recover what was lost to them, what they had lost for themselves. But I also know that a lot of times, and this is a statistical fact, a lot of times the point of no return has already been reached for them in their own mind within counseling. And so they're, this is kind of a last ditch, ditch effort. And I've heard it explained to me that it's almost like, well, I'm coming here to satisfy your need for counseling, but I've already decided that in five sessions, I'm gone. And it's such a sad thing to hear something like that for people that are trying to figure out their marriage. And I always wonder what happened, what could have done, been done better to be more successful in that process. And I don't know if I necessarily have an answer because each marriage is different, but I do know that marriage counseling works, but you have to be fully invested in the process. And a lot of times I know that people are not invested in that process. So I wonder what you guys think, what does it mean to be married? And why is it that Christians are as bad and a lot of times worse than secular marriages? What's happening there that people are saying it's okay to have that process? Now, I will say this. I did see a study. It, it's maybe four years old now where they said that that's the case, that Christian marriage is the same or worse than secular marriage. But they actually said for Couples that pray consistently every single day, at least one time a day, together, not necessarily pray in general, but pray together, they have a 90% chance of staying together for their entire life. And that just absolutely shocks me that that's the case. Now, I say it shocks me and then I think about it. Why is it that that's the case? And for me, some of the big reasons for that might be well, they're communicating more. They are talking to each other. They are trying to figure things out and they want to actually hear the hearts of the other person in the conversation. It's amazing how much communication plays into a marriage that's not only successful, but truly God honoring in their process. And for me, this is always a difficult thing because I'm so absorbed in myself. Um, if you guys have, I'm going through a book by Gary Thomas um, it's the follow-up, it's the practical follow-up to his book, Sacred Marriage. And in Sacred Marriage, he just talks about 
what is good marriage and make sure you always put Jesus first and all those different things that absolutely true and absolutely important, but it's, it's stuff that's kind of a theological basis and there's no real, there's substance there, but it was kind of boring. But then there's practical application. The next book that he had was absolutely amazing. And in this book, he talks about how we need to stop being so selfish. And one of the comments that he made in there is, it's a generality, I, I recognize that, and he notes that in the book, but men have this conquest mentality where they need to go and look for the next big challenge. And at one point, it's going and getting your degree, at another point, it's going and getting married. But then what do you do once you get married? You look for the next challenge in your life. And so his process was stop making it a challenge and recognize that marriage is a long-term life commitment. And for me, that was like a daunting, oh my goodness, duh, this is absolutely true. And at times I do find myself personally saying, okay, what's next? What else can I do that's amazing? Um, let's start a new blog. Let's try to do a huge research project. Let's start a Minecraft server. And so for me, I can see at times where myself have, I've done that. And that's been a difficult wake up call for myself. Um, and just simply being selfish in this process, I think is difficult too, because it's trying to conquer my spouse. And that's a difficult thing. And there's more layers to it. And I would highly recommend the book. Um, any of Gary Thomas's books are amazing, but to all of his marriage books are something worth reading and refreshing and really kind of getting the most out of. Um, in fact, I've used it in many academic settings as well as personal devotionals. So I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. What are your thoughts on marriage? And why is it that Christians aren't doing as well in their marriages as opposed to um, secular? Because you think that we understand what love is. We have the ultimate person that is the ultimate lover and shows us true and authentic love that can never be matched and yet we still don't understand how to be married um, and recognize that in your answer you're giving a little piece of your hearts and your own experience in that um, and that's okay and that's good but then also recognizing that not everybody's answer is going to align with everybody else and that's all right as well I think that there's growth and goodness that comes out of that so i'd love to hear what you guys have to say i'm going to get off my counseling horse for a minute finish up this ice i got a nice little design work i'm planning to use that i'm going to utilize a ton of ice for so love to hear what you guys have to say leave you guys' comments down below and i will catch you guys next time see you see ya